<clears throat> Good afternoon, and welcome to Blessed Sacrament Cathedral as we gather to celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We ask you to be on the lookout over the next several days for a postcard you will be receiving in the mail from our parish. The postcard explains that our parish has continued to care for the spiritual and material needs of our faith community, despite the pandemic. But it also acknowledges that COVID-19 has greatly impacted every form of stewardship. It asks you to pray about three things, devoting your talent to a ministry, taking time to fill out a survey, and learning about increasing your online giving. Giving of your time, talents, and treasures is part of what we are calling an increased stewardship effort, and it is all starting this week. This fall, we will be mailing a ministry listing. Please contact the church if you wish to volunteer for any of the ministries so we can talk you through the clearances process. Serving as a lecturer, server, usher, or in any other way is a wonderful way to support our community of faith. Another element of stewardship is helping the church to stay connected to you. Please take a moment to fill out the survey. The link to the survey is on the postcard. It is very important that we keep our records up to date. And finally, we ask, we also need financial support during this difficult time to continue God's work. The postcard explains how to increase your offertory with online giving. Please keep our community of faith in your thoughts and prayers and keep an eye out for the postcard. Next weekend, October 17th and 18th, students from Aquinas Academy will be outside the church, either in the front of the church or if the weather is bad under the pontico in front of the rectory. So in 2021 lottery calendars, these calendars feature $14,000 in prizes throughout the year. Calendars are only $25 each, and all proceeds will directly benefit Aquinas Academy. Thank you for your support. The Mass intention from the Mass is beginning January 2020 can be found on our parish website to download and print off and can be picked up in the parish office. Please note that at this time we are only accepting one form per household until the start of the new calendar year. Now, in honor to honor the sanctity of the Mass, please silence all electronic devices. And now as we begin our celebration, please rise if you are able. Good afternoon, Monty. 
Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. You see rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all people, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every face, the reproach of the people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we have looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In garden pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful waters he leads me. He refreshes. 
precious my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Holy goodness and kindness follow me. All the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all these things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parable of Philemon. The kingdom of heaven will be likened to a king who gave a ring to his son. He dispatched his servants to send of the invited guests to the feast. But they refused to come. A few times in the sun, other seven came. Two hours and one were behold, they prepared my banquet. And the clouds and fire and fire are filled, and everything is ready to come to the feast. 
see the glory of the invitation and never know. And he would fall and never to his business. And then he would say, Lord, if he said this, he would see them and kill them. The king was amazed and sent his troops. He destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And he said to his servants, The king is his body, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore to the main road and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bound and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. And when the king came to meet the guests, he saw a man there in a dress in a wedding gown. The king said to him, My son, how is it that you came in here without a wedding gown? And he was reduced to silence. And the king said to his attendants, Leave his hands and feet and cast them out into the darkness and the fire, for they will be willing and going to their feet. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The gospel is the Lord. I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last four or five, six weeks, many of you have been developing a theme. We've developed a theme related to the kingdom of the kingdom. Jesus is here to announce the kingdom of the kingdom of the world. And we have readings. Well, I think about God's mercy, God's grace, God's beneficence. I think all the parables that are generally spoken to the chief priests and elders, the leaders of the people, the people who should be knowledgeable about God's graciousness, about the coming of the kingdom. The parables tell a little bit different story. They tell a story of judgment, a story of disappointment. Disappointment in those who should know better, those who know the law, those who are the teachers. And you see, if you have the parable of the vineyard, here in this gospel, even though we had a long feast, we invited guests to treat the servants. We go about their way, some actually even told the servants who are willing to extend their invitation. The theme of abundance and grace and wonderful, wonderful gifts. We really in our first reading today. On this mountain, this is the promise. This is the promise of the covenant. This is the promise of the new covenant. The coming to us through Jesus Christ. We celebrate the early Eucharist. We hear it in the words that the priest says. This new and everlasting covenant. There is a banquet. There is a wonderful gift to us. I saw that the two priests and scholars were not their leaders. We can read the scriptures. We know what Jesus teaches. We know what the Old Testament says. We hear it every Sunday. We are not called. But why would we show up without a wedding day? Hmm, does that even correct people? I mean, you know, the God of all the men. Why does that bother you? It does bother me. If I'm not going to speak and go to the streets, why do you want to go to the streets? 
that you need to speak in your uniform. You live exactly where you speak in two. If you can know how to be subject to the prayers for our living feast, we know how we should be praying for the prayers for our living feast. But if last week, my senior confirmed the number of our living children, men and women, at the beginning of their adulthood, I can to ask you to pay attention to the Spirit. You see, you challenge them to say that there are all sorts of things that give them our way. And all sorts of rules or restrictions that the world puts on the field. The question then, the God's way, the Lord's way, is the only way that we're following. So we can get out of there. We will only have to read the scriptures. You see, the two priests and elders know God's will, God's way. There are all sorts of things that come in their life. Maybe it's the accommodations they've made with the Romans and Jesus' done. Or the accommodations they made to the tribes that were in the Romans. Prior to the Amazon. I find it interesting in the scriptures that Jesus said, Some ignore the invitation of the other one. One thing is wrong. Another thing is religious. We are all pursuit of the good life. And do we have all of them? And we can see the blinds of the entire system. There are all sorts of reasons that we can get distracted. If we read the first thing here, we can have to write it down. Because we all have the schemes of the world, the teachings of the world, the getting his word. He doesn't understand what is required if one is going to be invited to the feast. God's way, the knowledge, the good deal, the good deal, the good deal by workplace and family, the community, anyone, it is God's way. It would be a shame if we wound up sitting down to that great feast that the Father has prepared for us. And Jesus comes over to us and says, and the thing is, how is it that you can do what I do in my mind? So you see, it is important for us, and this is the message that Matthew is driving on in his day, and he is driving it on for us today. That it is not the way of the world, it is not the way of kindness. It is not the way of your friends and family, the people that you think are important. Unless they too walk in the way of the world. We are all invited to the feast. The good and the bad. The difference is. Will we take on that wedding gown? Will we change our point of view? Will we follow Jesus Christ? Or will we be left to our family or our business or whatever that's the way?
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God invites us to the banquet of life, and so we have the confidence to bring forth our prayers and petitions. For the church, that God will continue to help us grow in holiness and strength, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord that the faithful of the Diocese of Greensburg will offer prayers of hope to the Lord as the Holy Spirit guides the Church in choosing our new bishop. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That all people may recognize the sacredness of human life and defend this fundamental right from the moment of conception until natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord for our parish community, that the Lord will continue to help us to speak the truth in charity to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of the sick and those who care for them, that Jesus, the divine physician, will heal the sick, protect the healthy, comfort the fearful, and give respite to the weary. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who have died, both here and around the world, that the dearly departed and those who mourn their loss may take courage and find renewed hope in the promise of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Almighty and eternal God, our salvation comes from you alone. As you watch over the lives of your people, hear the prayers that we offer you this day and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
for Holy Communion, as we have been doing, please go out the side aisles and come around. Once we've given communion to the nave, we will give communion to the transepts.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dream. 